Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we're concluding our look at the new talent skill trees here in update 0.10.0 by having a look at the aircraft carrier skills. Now, there is an argument to be made that the aircraft carrier class benefits more from this skill rework, change, whatever, than any other class in the game. And the reason for that is simple. It's exceedingly simple. There were only, what, 32 skills in the, la in the other system. 32 total commander skills, period. Now, and, and then what, only maybe, maybe, maybe a quarter of those, maybe a third of those were really useful for aircraft carriers. Aircraft carrier cookie builds were almost more cookie cutter than any other class in the game. But now, ladies and gentlemen, now aircraft carriers have their entire own skill tree now i'm not going to get into the carrier no carrier carriers good carrier bad that's not why we're here right we're here to talk about what the skill tree is what it does and how is it good is it bad what kind of choices you would make okay that all is a different topic so if you're if you're here to just rage about carriers guys i mean if it makes you feel better go ahead but i'm probably not going to respond to you in the comments because that's not what we're here to talk about okay all right let's have a look at what has actually happened to carriers here in the skill rework starting at tier one we get hang on click on this here we go. Last gasp. So this completely restores the engine boost for the last attack flight of the aircraft carrier's planes. This was a one-point skill in the old system. Here it is again. It's on the opposite side of the tree. It was all the way on the right. Now it's all the way on the left. It's the same skill, right? So what this basically means is once you drop the ordinance and you're down to your... Uh, once you drop your second to last set of ordinance in any, any squadron run and you're down to your very, very last set of attack airplanes, usually two or three planes... Um, your engine boost will immediately refresh, immediately go back to full from whatever it was. So this can be really handy. Um, there's, I definitely used to take this skill on some of my old carrier builds, um, and I feel like for one point, this is still a place that, that some carrier captains are going to want to invest. This skill remains useful if you enjoy it, if you get use out of it, uh, that kind of thing. So definitely, definitely consider this one here worth one point. We have improved engine boost, 5% squadron engine boost duration. Again, this was also a skill in the old system. There was a time when I first started derping around with carriers after the rework, which was probably 18 months ago, that I really liked this skill. But over time, I, I came to remove it from most of my builds. Um, engine boost, uh, this is what, 5% duration, yeah. So... Engine boost, I think, uh, somebody, somebody's going to eviscerate me, and I should have done more research, but I believe it lasts 6 seconds for attack aircraft, and I believe it lasts 12 seconds for other air, other for the other types of aircraft, for bombers, for torpedo and, and like dive and uh, skip bombers and all that stuff, level bombers. So that means that a 5% bonus on a 6 second engine boost duration, let's say, is not even a full second. It's not even like a half a second. And then for the other for the other plane types, it is about a half a second. For one point, is a half a second of speed boost worth it? I don't think so. I I still don't see the value in this skill. I didn't. I I, I started off liking it, and I eventually grew to where I didn't like it. However, next door to it, ah, this one I like. This one I like. This one reduces the reload of your engine cooling consumable when you press R. Right when you're driving around and you press R, that is the engine cooling consumable. That that immediately refreshes your engine boost, um, and then it's got a cooldown. So just like any other consumable has a cooldown, this for one point reduces the cooldown of that consumable. This I like. There are times, and this is all about how you play carrier. So your choice between these two skills, if you decide to take one, is probably going to largely come down to personal preference. However. I vastly prefer this one. I have always wished my engine cooling would come back quicker in certain builds, in certain situations. I'm looking to smash that button like, dang it, why isn't this back yet, right? So for one point, I really, really like this skill. This is a new one, Engine Techie, and I'm glad to see it here. This gives you a little more, a little more options here for one point. The one point skill that most players will invest in is right here. This is Air Supremacy. This flies a flat 5% faster recharged play, a recharge rate on your aircraft. What does that mean? All right. Every plane in on your on your flight deck, you see there at the very bottom, it says aircraft restoration time. That number is is a fixed number based on the hull and and the, the type of aircraft and everything else. And if you click this skill, you're going to go back over here and it's going to reduce that number by 5%. Straight up 
flat out, simple, easy, okay? So basically, what does that mean? So you're going to get back planes faster, okay? You can stack this skill with a module over on your aircraft carrier in upgrade slot 5 that also reduces your restoration time by 5%. So you can actually lower this number, lower all of these numbers, because it's a little different for each aircraft type. You see there it was was 75 seconds for the attack, 76 for the torpedo bombers, and something, yeah, 80, looks like it was 87 for the, the dive bombers. Um, you can reduce it again, right? So this would come down another four seconds probably across the board. So that's kind of nice. Um, this is where most carrier players, I think, are going to invest their first point, at least to start off with. Direction Center for Fighters basically gives you um, an extra fighter in each wave of consumables. Again, what does this mean? All right, let's, uh, let's go back and show you what I'm talking about. When you look at each aircraft type, especially in the, starting in the middle tiers, every just about everybody has this little patrol fighter consumable. You can see there it tells you on the right number of fighters in that flight is five. Okay, if I go over here and I pick this skill, uh, and I I'll just go ahead and master it because it's free to get rid of it. I'll just demonstrate what we're talking about here. You go back over here, and now that number is that should supposed to be six. What did they do here? Hang on, what happened here? When an aircraft is activated, okay, so it doesn't actually show it. That's interesting. Used to this showed up in the consumable, but it doesn't. But that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, wait a minute! No, 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 no. This is on. Oh, this used to impact the cons the, the the fighters that you the manually drop fighters. Now it only impacts the ones on the carrier. Well, guys, there you go. We're all learning together at the same time. So this skill has actually been changed from what it used to be. This skill used to impact both the consumable on the carrier's hull and the and the consumables you dropped in the field. You got an extra fighter. Uh, that doesn't apparently seem to be the case anymore. So okay. So for one point, yeah, I doubt I'd spend. I doubt I doubt I'd spend time on this. If it impacted my squadrons that I like my fighters that I dropped on the board elsewhere, okay, yeah, probably, but not so much. All right, this one, however, does impact your fighters on the board. Extends the patrol radius of the patrol fighters and interceptor consumables. Search and destroy. This is a new skill. So basically, when you drop a fighter on the board, you get that little shaded area that shows you the patrol area of the fighter. Um, what this skill does is make that area, gives it a 10% larger radius, which, as we've talked about in some other videos, actually equates to 20% larger area when you run around the area of that circle. That just gives you a little more board control. Um, is this worth one point? I feel like it is. Uh, it kind of depends on how aggressive you are about using your fighters to protect your team and or spot the enemy. Um, this is I'm I'm learned I've learned over time that knowing when and where to drop fighters is definitely one of the more <sighs> practiced, advanced experienced, let's say, experienced car carrier skills. I'm getting better. I'm not great. There are times I should drop a fighter and don't. There's times I do drop a fighter and I shouldn't have. So, but getting more getting more spotting and getting more board control area out of it for only one point, that could be really handy. I like that a lot. Moving on to tier two, torpedo bomber. This is a flat out 10% reduction to the torpedo arming distance. What the hell does that mean? All right, let's talk about this one for a minute. Over here on the right, do they tell you this? They don't tell you this in the port screen. All right. I can tell you this for a fact because I know... I'm going to go back over to my web browser a moment. I know I did all the research on this once upon a time. Um, I need to look at aerial torpedo. Those aerial... Okay. In, um, when, you do, when you start data mining uh, the, the various torpedo um, attributes in World of Warships, one of the things you discover is that aerial torpedoes aerial drop torpedoes all have an arming distance. Now, this is displayed for you in um, in the uh, the game client, right? When you when you go down on the deck and you see your little torpedo um, armament cone in front of you, there's a darker shaded area and a lighter shaded area. That darker shaded area that's closer to your plane represents the arming distance of the torpedo, basically saying the torpedo will not arm until it has traveled at least this distance. All right. That number is actually a little different for every carrier and every tor every aerial drop torpedo in the game. And I gotta find, I need to find. Why can I not find the table for this? Oh well, I'll find it. I'll find it and put a link in it. Okay, I've got. I know I have this table 
on uh, on uh, oh it's on the flooding page I think I have this table on uh, uh, the wiki because I took the time at one point and extracted all of this data out of the out of the three D part out of the third party sites and put it onto the wiki so that everybody would have this. Um, anyhow, what this skill does is it reduces the length of that that shaded area so that you can drop torpedoes just a little bit closer to the hull of whatever ship it is you're targeting with them. It, it basically gives your opponent less time to react because the torpedo arms just that much faster. Um, I like this skill. I think this is a really neat skill for two points. This is um, the kind of thing that I think is really handy for ships that have slower torpedoes. Like, for example... Um, well, maybe I'm wrong, but I like it. Like, you know, I, I was playing around on my Ranger this morning and I felt like I got all I good use out of this skill, right? Uh, at the same time, faster torpedoes tend to have a longer, uh, a longer shaded area that they are not, they are, they don't arm in. So this could also be a good skill that would benefit something like uh, a Japanese carrier, a Kaga, a Ryuho, something like that, where basically the torpedo just arms faster and it's already moving 50 knots and, oh, well, that sucks to be you, right? You know, so... For two points, especially if you plan on getting a lot of work out of your torpedo bombers, probably not, a, maybe not, maybe not necessarily. I was going to say not necessarily a good thing for German carriers, but I don't actually, I don't agree about that either because, you know, if you're a German carrier, you're probably trying to drop your torpedoes on those, those uh, dodgy little destroyers. This gives them less reaction time. So there's an argument to be made. That this is just a great skill across the board for just about every carrier, every carrier you're going to be driving because everybody's got to get work out of their torpedoes. This is a really, really good skill. I'll put a link down to that, um, the uh, aerial torpedo uh, chart that lists that um, uh, arming distance in the in the in the in the comments. I'll, I'll definitely put that down there. But I've got that data on the wiki. Moving on, Swift Fish straight up five percent torpedo speed buff. I feel like we used to have a skill like this in the old tree. Maybe it's a module. I don't remember. There's very few carriers I would take this on. There's very few carriers I would even consider taking this on. Right? I mean. Let's look at Zeppelin here. As I recall, Zeppelin's torpedoes are kind of... No, they're not fast. Okay, so they're 35 knots. If I take this skill, it's going to be a two-knot speed increase. Yeah, two knots. I mean... Eh, do we? I mean, is that really going to make a significant difference to your opponent? Probably not. You're not, you're, not, you're not notably reducing his reaction time given that you're dropping these torpedoes more or less as close to his hull as you possibly, possibly can get away with. So, in a, you know... Uh, 99 times out of 100, you would never notice the difference in this skill on, a, on like a Zeppelin. Um, the faster torpedoes, again, I come back to the Japanese torpedoes. This would probably be maybe like a four-knot buff. That might be something. That might be okay. That might feel good. Um, I don't know that I would do it still. Again, those torpedoes are fast enough already. I'm not convinced that an extra four or five knots is really going to make a difference. But anyway, that is that is Swiftfish. I don't think I would spend points there. Uh, improved engines, 2.5% squadron speed. Faster planes are always good. You're going to see a lot of people taking this skill. Uh, I take, I, to, I, to me, this is, this is probably going to be just part of my default base build for most carriers, especially starting off until I convince myself I either do or don't need it. But yeah, this is a great skill for two points. Um, it's just a straight up speed buff to, to all your squadrons, usually three or four knots. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you're going to be spending a lot of time behind your planes. You will absolutely, you're going to get use out of this skill every game. And for only two points, you can't, you can't argue. It's amazing. Repair specialist. This gives you a 10%, um, a longer repair when you push your little repair button and an extra charge of it. Now for most, most carriers in the game, this only impacts their, um, uh, torpedo bombers, right? Torpedo bombers are the most common ones that get the little repair consumable um, because, you know, theoretically, I guess they spend the most time down on the deck doing what they do. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is useful. I, I, I could see it for two points, especially if you're a ship like a Kaga, let's say, that leans heavily on your torpedo bombers and really needs them to come back to the deck as quickly as possible and as many as you can get back. Yeah, I absolutely see the value in this skill. So, Again, this is, this is probably more situational. This is going to impact everything you drive. This is only going to impact one of your three squadron types most of the time. I, I don't know I would take this on every carrier build, but there are definitely cases out there where I would go, yep, I'd reach for that skill for two points. Speaking of situational skills, we have secondary armament expert here for two points. All right, so... Everybody's going to go, Zeppelin, yay, Zeppelin, we're going to get meme secondaries back. And yeah, maybe you will. I mean, Zeppelin's secondaries are already pretty stupid, right? They Zeppelin, I think, has arguably the most accurate secondaries in the entire game. And now you're going to give them, you're going to make them faster reload, and you're going to buff her AA. Now, are carriers likely to buff their AA? This is, this is an interesting question, right? I think right now, most people are going to look at this skill and dismiss it. But I want you to consider something. 
Right now, we haven't gotten to this part yet, but in a minute I'm going to talk about how Concealment Expert is gone out of this tree. Every carrier in the game is a little more detectable than it used to be. And I think that's going to lead... This is going to sound awful. There's already a lot of people that don't understand how to, where to put their carry hull when they drive a carrier, right? They, get, they drive too far forward. They don't hide behind an island. They never leave their spawn because they never turn their engines on. You are not an airfield. Do not do this, okay? Um, carrier sniping is going to become just a little more common because it's going to become a little easier, right? There are aircraft carrier hulls now that if you don't take a, if you don't take a concealment expert uh, over in slot five, and that's only accounts for high tier carriers, your detection radius by air is like 14 or 15 kilometers. So an enemy who just randomly happens to drive planes near you will go, oh, look, here I am. And every battleship in the game is going to go, mine, 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 right? So AA damage, right? Carrier sniping from another carrier has not really been a thing, and I don't think it's going to continue to be a thing. However, we might see more people investing this to buff their A a little bit on certain hulls in certain cases, just to make sure that the planes go away and they can stay unspotted. We'll see. For now, I look at this skill and I go, Zeppelin, more than likely, some German carriers, possibly, everybody else, probably not. Last but not least, we have Patrol Group Leader. Here we go. This is a straight-up buff to the number of consumable charges you get of Patrol Fighter or Interceptor. What the hell is Interceptor? I'll talk about that in a minute. We're, we're not there yet. But basically, for now, think of this as every every squadron in your uh, on your carrier that has a consumable that you can push and call down Patrol Fighters, this simply gives each one of those squadrons an extra charge. It's like Superintendent for that particular skill. Um, this this little line here, this, this entire line of skills is all about fighters. There's some interesting things happening in here, and we're going to talk about that as we go down the tree. Moving on to Tier 3, Level 3 skills, we have Sight Stabilization. Now, this basically improves the aiming speed, the time it takes your reticle to, to, to kind of low, uh, you know, go from fully, fully, I just started to, okay, we're, uh, we're fully aimed, um, just a little bit faster. This skill is actually nerfed a little bit for a couple of reasons, I guess for a couple of things. One is, these used to be, if I remember right, used to be 10% buff. Now you see here, only 7.5. It also used to cost 4 points, now it only costs three. So it's cheaper, it's easier to obtain, but it's slightly less effective. This is still a really good skill though, right? Um, I've, when you talk to carrier when you talk to carrier drivers, uh, guys that do this a lot, like Gaishu and Askins, people that play a lot of carrier, in my experience, and they can, they can come tell me they're wrong, um, that my experience is there are some ships you want this skill on and some ships you can probably get away with it you don't, you don't really need it on. If you want that kind of in-depth analysis, I would highly recommend going over to uh, like Askins' channel. He does a really good job of kind of breaking down carrier builds, talking about carrier play, really getting into the nuts and bolts and mechanics of carriers to a level that I will probably never have the patience to do. So I'm going to put a link down to his channel below. If you really care about aircraft carrier, you really want to get into it, go check out Askins for sure um, on YouTube and Twitch. And, and, and go catch him on Twitch and ask him. Just ask him straight up. He'll talk to you. He loves to help, right? That's, that's literally what he's there for. He considers himself a, a CV. He is a self-styled CV instructor, okay? Um, but I believe that there, you will find over time, if you more play more carries, there are carries you're going to go, yeah, I absolutely need this. And some carries you go, I probably won't. However, if you are a new carrier player, still inexperienced, this is a great place to invest three points. Don't discount it. Enhanced Armor Piercing Ammunition. Essentially, this is a straight-up buff to the rocket and bomb damage of every German tech tree carrier in the game. Now, is it a huge buff? No. No, it isn't. 3%, right? Let's, um, let's go pick up... Let's just go pick up a, a Richtofen, for, 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 for example, and have a look at what this skill actually does. All right, so yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, here we go. So, let's see. Bombers. So... Your, your AP bomb drop went from 8,800 to 9060. Mm, I don't know, right? Is this worth three points? I don't think so, guys. I really don't think it is. The rocket damage goes up by 90. 90 points of rocket damage. I, I just don't see it, right? I just don't see the value in this skill for three points. If this was a one-point skill for only 3%, maybe. Maybe you might take it. But, but, for, but for three points, no. They're far, far better things that I'm going to want to invest in for three points. Let's keep going. Moving on one more to the right, we have Demolition Expert. Now, 
This, of course, on other skill trees, uh, everybody calls this Pyrotechnician. Here, Wargaming has retained the old name of Demolition Expert, and they've retained more of the functionality that it used to have. You see there, rockets with a 1% fire chance, HE bombs with an extra 5% fire chance. Now, what are you going to take this on? You're not going to take this on a German carrier, that's for sure, right? You might, you might take it on a Japanese, but probably not. Where are you really going to take this? You really want to take this on a British carrier, if you can afford the points in your build. And you might even consider it on an American carrier, because they have those big, huge, nasty HE bombs. Uh, a little extra fire chance never hurt nobody. But really, this is almost exclusively a British carrier skill. That HE bomb chance is incredibly noteworthy for those guys with the level bombers, because remember that British level bombers do not those bombs do not penetrate a lot of targets that they find themselves in with the matchmaking so you won't get full pen damage out of those bombs what you're really looking for is to try and stack the fires so the fire chance here is noteworthy is useful probably worth the three points on a british carrier moving on aircraft armor straight up minus 10 percent a damage reduction this skill really hasn't changed it's still three points it's still right here where you left it it's still a 10 percent damage reduction to aa this skill is why i say that aa in world of warships right now is a damage race is a numbers race so anything you can be doing to help buff your aa just make your numbers larger helps overcome skills like this okay so if you're driving a carrier Chances are you're going to spend three points here because why would you not? Like, this is pretty good for three points. This is just straight up amazing. Moving on, survivability expert. Aircraft hit points increase for each ship tier 25 points. What? Wait, what does that mean? All right, let's, let's talk through this real quick. You see there, my attack aircraft on Graf Zeppelin have 1,500, I'm sorry, 1,400 and 19 hit points per plane. When I take this, 25 hit points per tier. That means I should get 200 more hit points per plane once I click this. So when I go back over here, these planes should now be... That's interesting. That's higher than it should be. Hmm. Hmm. I wonder if this skill is bugged. <laughs> Anyways, um, bottom line is it should be about a 200, straight up 200 point buff per, per tier. And for some reason, it's clocking in at 215. I don't know why. That might be a bug in how this skill is coded. It's 200 here. Oh, I know why. This is because of one of the modules I have in, I have included. So here you see 200 here, 200 here. That's my bad. Okay, that's it. But anyway, skill's working correctly. My bad. So, but anyway, it's just a straight up health buff to your planes. Again, most carriers will take this, okay? Because more plane health, less incoming damage, like these two together. This this to me is how just about every, these three, these three skill, four skills, just about how every carrier player is going to start their build most of the time. Moving on to the right, last but not least, we have Interceptor. Now, Interceptor is really an interesting concept. What Wargaming has done here, they have replaced... If you take this skill, you replace the Patrol Fighter's skill with this, the Interceptor skill. Now, that increases the patrol radius of what you call, uh, what we think of as a Patrol Fighter, another 10%. So now it's a 20% bonus to that patrol radius. This is significant, right? Now this patrol radius is getting kind of large, right? It's getting pretty big. But here's the thing, and you see it there in the red text. These interceptors will not attack hostile fighters that are nearby, and they do not, this is a big one, they do not spot enemy ships. This skill is exclusively for people who want to drop fighters to intercept incoming aircraft from the enemy, enemy carrier. Period. That's all. Because once you push this button, that's literally all this plane will do. It will not spot. It will not shoot down enemy fighters. It will only engage enemy bombers and attack aircraft coming in to kill your teammates. Hmm. A lot of a lot of advanced carrier players are going to tell you this skill is garbage. And and if I'm a hundred percent honest, on most carriers it is because the the value of dropping a patrol fighter for some spotting damage, right? While you're Cycling your planes cannot be overstated. What do I mean? All right, let's say for a minute you're in the middle of a you're you're getting towards the end of a bombing run. Let's say you're busy rocketing this little destroyer. It's a you're in your Ranger, and you've put a few rockets into him, and he's getting low, and he's trying to get away. So, um, you drop a patrol fighter to keep help keep him spotted just a little longer, while you you know your plane your attack runs over. Your planes are going back to the deck. 
And while you bring in a new squadron, that patrol fighter will hang out a little while and help provide spotting for your team since you're not there, right? You're trying to drive your planes back into the, 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 the engagement zone and you can't be there. So while you're not there, necessarily, does, does your team doesn't have the spotting, okay? If you take Interceptor, you lose that capability. So a lot of carrier players will tell you to avoid this skill. They prob- and they're probably right. There are places I'm still going to try to mess around with this skill, though, in randoms. For me, it's all about Enterprise. Enterprise, with her ridiculous, ridiculous fighter squadrons, I think stands to benefit more from this series of skill skills than any other carrier in the game. Um, I also feel like there's a possibility, there's an argument to be made that the German fighters on the German carriers might benefit from these as well. Why is that? German fighters have artificially lower detection radiuses than other um, other fighters of other nations. So what that means is you see them with less reaction time. And now I'm going to I'm going to buff his patrol radius, right? I'm going to buff that fighter's patrol radius and then I might somebody might stumble into it, right? He has a larger radius. Maybe the patrol radius is actually larger than the detection of the fighter. That could be huge. I got to play around with this skill on some German boats, right? Like that could be really fun if it works that way. But anyways, Interceptor exists. It's a it's a it's an alternate style of patrol fighter that does not spot surface ships, does not attack enemy fighters, is only good, only good against uh, enemy bombers. And But when by the time you stack these two skills together, you get a much larger patrol radius, and that can be really handy. So, hmm, something to play around with here on a few select carriers. Moving on to level four, we have bomber flight control. For four points, you get 5% cruising speed of bombers. Um, this is talking about bombers. It's talking about dive and level bombers, okay? If I select this skill, despite the fact that the word bomber appears here next to the word torpedo, this skill does not impact torpedo bombers. It only impacts, you see here, my dive bombers. Now, um, for four points, this is a really, really steep change. Really steep. However, again, for a ship, uh, some of these German carriers that are heavily relying on their dive bombers for a lot of their damage output... This might be a worthwhile place to invest four points. I don't see myself doing this very much. I feel like this is too, this is overcosted. I feel like this is too expensive. Plane speed is important. Two points for plane speed is good. Four points for plane speed. Think about this for a minute. For two points here, I'm getting a blanket two and a half percent speed boost to everything. That's a really good investment of two points. That honestly, that would be a really good investment for three points, but it's only two points. Fine. Down here, they want me to pay two more points to get double the bonus, but now I'm restricted to literally only one, possibly two squadrons on my ship. There are some ships in testing. I believe there is a German carrier in testing. I want to say it's uh, Max Immelman that is both um, dive bombers and skip bombers right now. So if you're getting double duty out of this skill, um, okay, I could see it. But like straight up, mm -mm, I don't think so. I don't think I would take this. Proximity Fuse. This is a new skill. It reduces the effectiveness of your opponent's anti-torpedo protection by 10%. Hmm. Now, this is definitely something worth looking at, especially if you are, say, everybody's favorite aircraft carrier, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, right? For example, any of these ships like a Midway, an FDR, um, that, that relies on those big anvil, those big anvil, big high alpha torpedo strikes, this could be really good, right? You're, you're in, in theory, you should be increasing the overall damage of that attack. You should be increasing the overall flood chance of that attack. This is a really good skill for four points. And I think you're going to see a lot of carriers derp around with this and a lot of them take advantage of it um, or at least try to maximize their advantage of it. Again, as they should, right? Um, but because if you're going to invest in this, yeah, yeah, go, go, go make it work, right? Um, I won't go into it. There's a lot of carriers that will benefit from this skill. A lot of carrier players will take it. Do not be surprised. If dealing with carrier torpedoes from going forward, you might flood and take a little more damage than you're used to, especially driving battleships. Close Quarters Expert. This is not Close Quarters Combat like we saw from the battleship tree. This is Close Quarters Expert. Again, a German slash German carrier skill, basically, right? Uh, an extra 20% secondary range and a reduction in the dispersion of the secondary battery shells. Um... So let's see. If I, is that, we know Zeppelin's secondary armor is already really good. She starts here. You see here the 7.9 uh, radius. I put this skill on, and we go out to 9.4. That's pretty good. Like, that's nice. This this is, again, I look at this skill. There are probably a handful of carriers you'd consider this on. Mostly, I still look at Zeppelin as the gold standard. 
I do not think you would invest in this skill on German carriers. I think there are better places to invest points. But hey, you do you, guys. If you love to brawl with your German secondary aircraft carrier, this skill is for you. Advanced Aircraft Armor, a brand new skill here at Tier 4, reduces the damage of AA uh, flak explosions, basically. Um, I feel like, and I'm not going to pretend that I remember the old skill tree perfectly, I feel like the old version of this skill reduced flak bursts, but I think it was less than this. I'm going to, give me give me a moment here, I'm going to go check this out because I don't remember 100%. Um... But I feel like there was a skill here that did something similar that was uh, a little different. Let's have a look. It was called... It was a four-point skill, was it not? Um, let's see. No, that's the old, old, old school. I don't know. I'll look it up later. But anyhow, straight up, these days, this is just a 25% bonus. 25% uh, reduction to, to flak explosions, more or less. Now... Swallowing flak is bad. Always, always, always. Um, so anything you can do to cut down the damage you take from flak is good. In my opinion, this is a great place to spend four points. However, again, I come back to, there are carriers you might decide to skip this on. Again, I look at a German carrier that has super fast planes that might be, you know, zooming around through the flak. The flak falls behind him. He may not need this skill. Maybe, you, maybe you're confident in your skills, your carrier plane driving skills enough you don't feel like you need this skill. Okay, skip it, right? It's not for you. However, majority of us plebes, the majority of us uh, derpy, you know, Sunday dri Sunday carrier drivers are going to take this skill because it's, I'm going to be eating. I always eat a lot of flack. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Moving on, we have Hidden Menace. Now, on the face of it, Hidden Menace looks really interesting. For starters, it's the only way you can reduce the detection of your carrier's hull in the tech tree. Right there, a, 15, a flat 15% reduction. That's really good. That's better than the old consumable. Oh, sorry, better than the old concealment expert skill, which was only a ten percent reduction. It also reload your damage control party reloads a little faster. <sighs> Don't get me started because I hate how DCP works on carriers right now. In exchange for this, the speed of the planes coming back to your deck is halved. Now, let's talk about why you shouldn't take this skill right now. Okay. And there's some videos and some Twitch clips out there on it. So I'm, this is, if you've done a little research, I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but a lot of people probably don't know this, okay? When, what this means is, ordinarily, what, let's put it this way. I take the, I, I took the skill on my Kaga build the other night on Twitch, thinking, excellent, Kaga wants the stealth, right? Kaga likes being able to sneak up. Um, and with, with Kaga on this skill, your, your hull detection is like a nine, it's like 9.3. You outspot certain cruisers with a Kaga when you, when you take the skill on Kaga, but... That, what that means is that 50% penalty starts the instant your ordinance drops. As soon as that plane's ordinance is out and it's making its run to the, to the ceiling so it can return to the carrier, it's moving at half speed. That means it spins 50% longer in the AA bubble of the ship you just attacked. What that means is those planes all died. Every single one of them is dead. So... This skill, as long as it works this way, as long as it works that the speed the speed penalty starts as soon as the plane drops the ordnance, or as soon as you press the F button, and not when the plane reaches cruising altitude to go back to your deck, this skill is is bad. Do not take this skill on any carrier you drive. Please don't. Please don't. You well, I mean, if you're plotting against me, please do. Right? I'll slaughter more planes. You'll be out of planes faster. But for for pity's sake, don't do this to yourself, guys. Um, it's just, it's, it's, this skill right now is badly designed. It doesn't function the way that it should be to ever be worth four points. Basically, right now, this skill is pay four points for your planes to die faster. Have fun. Don't, don't, don't do this to yourself. Don't take hidden mess. Very, very last, we have enhanced reactions with patrol. Okay, so this is basically for your patrol fighters, your, your interceptors. The time it takes to start attacking hostile aircraft is reduced. Okay, so let me make sure I understand this. When I push my patrol fighter button, the plane will arrive. You see it there, there's a penalty to the arrival time. So it's going to arrive 50% slower. It's going to spend 25% less time patrolling. So it's not going to spend 60 seconds patrolling. It's going to spend 40, uh, 45 seconds patrolling, whatever little area I've pushed the button for. In exchange for these two god-awful penalties, it says time before attack, Minus 80%. That's my bonus. I can't recommend this skill right now, guys, because I don't know how this skill works. Right? I can't even tell you. 
we're gonna have to, I'm gonna have to test it. I'm gonna have to try and figure it out. I I legit cannot tell you what this skill does. I literally can't. Time before attack? What does that even mean? <laughs> right? Right now, fighters only attack when a, an enemy squadron, whether it's fighters or bombers, wanders into their little patrol radius. And, and this is where it's seen, they have to wander into the patrol radius close enough to the fighter to aggro it, right? To get the fighter's attention. Because you can actually, if, you know, the fighter, the, the patrol fighter drives in a circle. And if he's on the opposite side of his patrol radius, when you drive through his little radius bubble, sometimes he'll ignore you, right? So fighter functionality is already eh, kind of questionable. Let's be honest. And now you're going to tell me I'm going to spend four points to, to, to invest in a skill that's so badly explained I don't even know what it does. No. Don't take this skill until we know what it does. <laughs> I just cannot recommend this one right now. Again, I look at maybe an enterprise, maybe once you've stacked all of this stuff up, maybe there's a benefit here. I don't know. But right now, I don't see it. Anyway, guys, there's our look at the carrier tree. I was pretty long-winded. Sorry about that. Um, again, go check out some other folks that, that don't that play carrier more. No carrier better. But for me, for my derping around a carrier, this, uh, what is this, 10, thir these 13 points right here are probably going to form the core of just about every carrier captain that I start off with. And then I'll probably pick some, I'll probably have some corner, some odd odd choices and some, some little things that I'll pick after that, okay? Anyway, guys, wash your hands. Be safe out there. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed these. I'll catch you next time.